Hey everyone, it's Andrea from SWL and I have today what I believe to be possibly the first unboxing on YouTube of this very special radio. You've probably never heard of it, but this radio and the type of chip that it is using has been flying under the radar for a while, gaining quite a following. There's a Facebook group dedicated to this chip or radios using this chip with almost 3,000 followers by now on the ultralight DXing group on groups.io. There's several discussions right now about this radio. Why? Because apparently performance is simply astonishing. And I'm using the words of Jay Allen one of the most well-respected radio reviewers in the U.S., probably in the world. I think he has seen more radios than most of us. And that is where I first heard of this radio. I will try to pronounce it. It is the Chodosin SR286. I will simply call it the SR286. I read Jay Allen's review and I wanted one immediately. It is not cheap. This radio is $129 from only a few sellers on AliExpress. It doesn't seem to be very widely available. I haven't found much information about it anywhere. There's no website for the company. The reviews, as I say, there was one by Jay Allen and a couple of others that I found, but not much. So I ordered one from AliExpress. It arrived Today, I also paid quite a FT import duty and VAT as well. So it's not a cheap radio, but apparently it's worth it. So what I'm going to do here now is the unboxing. I opened this packaging and I was very surprised actually. There is no box. It didn't come in a box. So I will show you. We're still going to do the unboxing and have a, a first look at this radio. It's all a bit of a mystery still. It runs on the TEF6686 chip, which is a chip that is used in car radios. That chip is apparently very, very good with catching and processing signals. Distant and weak signals, excellent on FM, apparently excellent on medium wave. This radio was made actually by default to catch medium wave signals on the whip antenna or with a wire and not the usual internal ferrite antenna. It does have an internal ferrite antenna, but apparently the performance on the whip is what makes it really, really good, as a car radio would do. You know, car radios with FM and medium wave bands, they use whip antennas. So, yeah, this unboxing, it's literally the first time that I'm going to switch on this radio. I haven't even really tested it yet, so... What you are seeing now, it's as new for me as it is for you. I'm really curious. I'm going to keep the video short, so we're going to look a little bit at just what the radio looks like, some of the features. It has a massive number of features. You can do, apparently, very many things with it. I have no idea still how to use all those features. So my plan now is just to look at the, you know, at reception. We'll have a quick look at FM, medium wave, and short wave. It doesn't have SSB though, so that's not an option. But let's look at this little beast, which is said to be perhaps the future of radio. It is apparently really, really way better than any of the current DSP chips from Silicon Labs. If you search on Google for TEF6686 radios, you will actually find quite a few interesting and strange looking radios, often in metal cases. They seem to be created just by very small companies, perhaps in China, as this one has been, I think. As you can see, this is the box. <laughs> There's the radio. No box. No information. No manual. There is an English language manual available online, though, so... You, you can use that. And then it comes in this little packaging. Uh, there's a little bit of a piece of thread that shouldn't be there. And 
let's see. This is literally all you get. You no name, <laughs> no box, no manual. You get this little carry case with the radio inside. Wrapped in plastic. There we go. And there is a charging cable. Oh, it still uses the mini USB, not the USB type C. And then the radio itself. This radio has quite a pedigree. The the box was designed by the same designer who designed the Eaton Elite Executive Radio as well as some of the C crane radios. And actually it looks quite similar to I think the the C crane Skyways. These these buttons here it looks very very similar. I don't have a C crane Skywave, but yeah, you know, from the pictures to me it looks very very similar. As you can see this radio is tiny 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 let's see let's compare we have the xh data d219 and the shodo sen is yes almost exactly the same size as the d219 very very small radio so it's really really portable with its impressive performance it should make a very good travel radio well, that is if the performance is as good as people say it is. Let's just see the little Retic is. Yeah, it's just slightly bigger than the than the Retic is, but quite a bit thicker. You can see. It's quite a bit thicker than the Retic is, but it's, yeah, slightly bigger. And let's take another more regular sized radio, the D109. And the Shodosin, you can see there, quite a bit smaller. Okay, so it doesn't even come with a battery. I need to use the battery inside my XH Data D109. It uses the 18650 batteries. <laughs> And there is power. At this point, I have no real idea what all the buttons do, but I will need to study the manual and see. It's got quite a lot of functions, various buttons that you need to press once or twice, or buttons that you press together. So I still need to figure all of that out. I'm not quite sure how everything works. But yeah, as you can see, FM, long wave, medium wave, short wave, ultra high sensitivity, multiband radio, SR286. There's a sleep button there and snooze. That's display and keyboard lock. There's something that says set and meter, probably for the meter bands. Yeah, meter bands plus, meter bands minus, it appears to be. There is the RDS button for FM. There's our bandwidth settings and something that says um, stereo, so for FM, I suppose. That's a tone button, delete and edit, which I assume has to do with the memories. There is the keypad here for frequency entering, a page button, so the memories work with the page system, the same as the, as the XH Data D808, which I don't really like, but we'll see. And this appears to be some kind of uh, auto search function. On the side, we have USB in 5 volt for the charging. There is the volume, the headphones, tuning up and down. And the tuning button says auto and tuning, squelch and step. So different ways to do that, I guess. And yeah, there's the antenna. That's pretty much it. On this side, there is an external antenna input. And at the back, not much. We have there the coverage. So FM64 to 108, long wave 144 to 519, medium wave 520 to 1710, and short wave 1711 to 2700. And that is the radio. And I put in my 18650 battery from the XH Data D109 because it didn't come with a battery as I said and we have a little kickstand as well there you go 
I will now look at some marginal FM stations. I don't think there will be anything on medium wave right now, except my local stations. And then also have a quick look at short wave. Maybe just search for a couple of signals and see. So we are in FM mode and I've got Pretoria FM here. And then I look at one or two others as well. We have some really excellent FM reception there. It was Pretoria FM, which is one that I regularly check on all new radios crystal clear on this one also tux fm which also comes from pretoria so both of those come from a distance of about 50 kilometers it's another city it's not johannesburg it's not targeting johannesburg which is where i am and the other one was impact fm also from pretoria so they came through through I'm <laughs> 
El gran misterio y la pregunta del millón sobre este producto es cómo se ve. En la vez pixelada, un poquito. El ghosting es muy poquito, la borrosidad no es muy grande, pero es una pantalla. No es como ver no, la realidad para nada. Pero para nada, ¿eh? O sea, está muy lejos de eso. O sea, es como tener una tela de seda sí. delante de los ojos y cuando caminas, todo se mueve y se queda borroso. Las gafas permiten ver el entorno por el que te mueves, aunque como acabamos de escuchar no tiene la mejor definición. El punto fuerte de este producto sin duda es su interfaz. La interfaz es lo que se ve mejor. Si tú te pones la pantalla, la pantalla se queda fija. Si tú te acercas así, te acercas a la pantalla. Y es brutal. O sea, es que parece que está ahí. Eso sí que es absolutamente increíble. Well, so I am impressed. On FM it's excellent. On shortwave I'm really surprised. There are some frequencies where usually there's nothing. Perhaps like a bit of noise. There might be something there. Like 4750. I picked up what sounds like, I don't know if it's Bangladesh better or in Indonesia or perhaps China, but usually there's nothing there. That is that is really, really impressive. So I think I'm going to have lots and lots of fun with this radio. I need to explore it a bit more, figure out exactly how everything works. Be sure that there will be very many videos following as I explore and experiment with this new Shodosin SR286. 